Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. Last spring, in April, with E117, Expona, and other things to come, I touched on the idea that I intended to introduce a new feature series here at the channel. Today, I'm proud to announce that new feature, Second Space. Now, I was joined for a visit over the Labor Day holiday by friend and colleague Maurice Jeffries, who was able to spend a few days here at the Audio Analyst both listening to this new Second Space concept, as well as getting a sense of the significant advances made with my reference rig. We will talk about my Hyper Audio system and its exceptional performance in another episode, but today he is here to share his impressions of what I'm going to be doing with Second Space. Here he is. Welcome. Um, you might recognize this cat. He's been on the channel a couple times. It's my good friend, colleague, and uh, a writer for who? Positive, Positive feedback, feedback and enjoy the music. Enjoy the music. Maurice Jeffries. Uh, he's up here for the holiday. Uh, this is the Sunday before Labor Day. We're having some fun. We've got a, a bit of an audio fest going on. And you notice we're shooting from a different position instead of being in front of my records today. Um, part of the reason is a, a new direction I'm going. Um, and I've, I've done a little on the channel with it. I've shown it uh, uh, briefly. But I've got a system in my living room. I'm calling this whole group now, we're calling it Second Space. And Jeff was kind enough to, uh, when he first got here, I wouldn't let him listen to the big rig first. I wanted to get this impression first. And I brought him up here. And I was impressed. What would you have to say about it, buddy? You kind of liked well, it. Well, I knew the components that you had selected. I had heard them before in other variations. Which, they're all listed in today's description. Absolutely. And there will be photos coming up as we're talking today. So don't, don't worry. We're not going to detail it now. Actually, I do have to clarify. I had not yet heard the the BMW crossovers through the little von. Schoen. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I had heard the the BMW. Sure, yeah, your Matrix BMW. My Matrix ones. But I had not heard these. Uh, so, in some respects, I knew what to expect sound quality wise because I'm a von Schweiker owner. I own the Endeavor Special Editions, which I adopted a little over a year ago as my long term reference. I heard the Ultra 9s on at least two separate occasions over extended long weekends uh, here. With I believe Greg. this is the third, and yes. This, this will be my third encounter with those speakers. So I'm reasonably familiar with their sonic footprint as well. And so obviously one doesn't expect from a small enclosure like get this, get the same scale and impact that you get with the big speakers. But what I was expecting was to be reminded of the Von Schweikert house sound, which right. is coherence detail, speed, and remarkable imaging and layering. And I did hear that from this little system. I was quite amazed. Yeah. By the way, you may do folks know that, that Leif and Damon rebuilt the crossover? I don't think so. Very briefly, thank you for bringing that up. Um, I gave these speakers uh, an award when they were released in 2004 because they were $999 a pair. They were the best under $1,000 speaker I'd heard at that point, and they got an award for that. But I needed another pair of speakers then, like I need them now. But I mean, I just I couldn't justify spending a thousand dollars on a pair of speakers in two thousand four. These came up on Audio Classics as a used Same. speaker. Um, <laughs> um, I got them used. They shipped them, and the problem with the shipping was, even though they were labeled, you know, don't don't you know, don't drop whatever. The crossovers were damaged in shipping. They were banged loose, and the coils were running loose. So. I took them apart, sent them back to Von Schweikert. Um, they refurbished them. I had gotten a call from, from Leif Swanson, who is the designer, and he's like, how big are the holes? I'm like, why? Just give me the measurements. I'm like, okay, here's the measurements. He's like, oh, well, all right, that won't fit. All right, I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, don't worry. Well, when the crossovers came back, they were a, a little different. Um, flat layer coils, high quality capacitors, they're very well done. So the crossovers are a little better than the average VR1 would have been. Uh, that notwithstanding, the original cabinets, the original insulation, the original cabinetry, the original uh, drivers. But go from there, sir. So we, the first day I got here, after drinks and playing with Her Highness. <laughs> Stella's sitting off camera here. It's, it's impossible not to play with her. No, she's a sweetheart. 100 pounds of, 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 of furry energy. 
Uh, we streamed, and you have the, is it the WIM streamer deck? Yes, I have, so, is, the, so there are three WIMs, which I'll be talking about. Uh -huh. I have the WIM Mini, which is 99 bucks. There is a WIM Pro, which is 149 I believe. What I'm using up here now is the WIM Pro Plus, which is 229 The reason I chose it, it has an AKG DAC, and it will stream DSD natively from its DAC. So, uh, because you know I'm a big DSD guy, I have yes, over so 600 you. DSD files, um, I wanted something that would stream that. So, And the first time I heard the system, I was so impressed by how much of the essence of the big system downstairs that I recall, Greg was able to distill into a smaller system. That, and, and this is what really impressed me. This is a system that lots of you can afford. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, some of the components are no longer available. For example, the beautiful Channel Islands of Audio Electronics. Uh, Dusty's firm no longer exists. Yeah. He's retired in uh, was it enjoying himself in Hawaii. I yeah. hope he's enjoying himself. He's enjoying himself. He's, he's, himself he's, not on he's got a new no. He's got a new speaker. Uh, but yeah, he he the company's retired. So the the thing is, everything here at retail when I bought it, and I mean the speakers were from two thousand four, the turntables from nineteen seventy seven, the amps are from two thousand five, the line stage is from like two thousand ten, the phono stage is from like two thousand eighteen, but I think everything here at retail, cables, subwoofers, everything, was under ten grand, which is. By the way, I think that Stereophile's average system price for its re for its readers is about fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars. That would make sense. Yeah. So, so this is a little bit below that range, but as I shared with Greg earlier, I think that in terms of engagement, musical naturalness, imaging and sound staging, but not necessarily the height that you get with a floor stander, uh, and overall impact, this is a this is a system that can really function as a final purchase option for folks that are just opposed. To two hundred and fifty thousand dollar floor stand. What are you trying to say? <laughs> uh, no, I look. Well, and and you're, you've hit on a huge point here, buddy, because that's the entire point of second space. That's right. Um, I'm going to be sharing um, products that I find to be either exceptional performers or overachievers or whatever in price ranges that most people can find a way to afford. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I mean, think it's important. Honest. Uh, Greg and I both fell in love when we heard Louis Desjardins' Chronos Discovery Turntable. But the turntable is, what, 120000 uh, Yeah, it's 120 by itself. But yes, that's without the yeah. superb $24,000 tone off. Which, yeah, I already did that. But I have a cousin who loves high-end audio, who loves music, who refuses to read reviews of components at that price point simply because he can't, he can't bother. relate yeah. economically, financially, or otherwise. Uh, and so... The kinds of components that Greg is going to talk about and the, that I like because a lot of this stuff reflects the kind of stuff I had when I first got started. Yeah, yeah. These are real world systems. You can't just buy $10,000 worth of components, throw them together and expect to get great sound. I mean, for instance, I have, so I started with one subwoofer and thought, eh, I hate single subs. I put in a second sub. It's not a matching sub. It's a different brand. But... With time and knowledge and setup, and proper dialing. What do you think? I mean, they were as cohesive and affordable pair of subwoofers as I've heard. I own the SVSs. Yeah, which are excellent subs. They're excellent little tiny micro subs. Yeah. Uh, and as good as a single sub sounded when I added the second, in terms yeah, stereo of, subs are the only yes, way to go. Absolutely. Yeah. In terms of yeah. base focus and precision and the sense of of, of Immersion uh, and, and staging yeah. the, the improvements that I heard. If you have the space, uh, stereo subs are the way to go. And yeah. the budget. Stereo Absolutely. subs are cru look, and 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 it, it's an option to start with one with the plan to move to two if that's a, a way that you can afford it by doing it in layers. That that's perfectly acceptable. But I do recommend two anytime it's possible because the difference, not just in space but in focus, is significant and. Dude, one of the subs in this room was less than $125. So you don't, look, you might need to have someone help you set it up, someone who's knowledgeable and capable of, of tuning these things and doing it, but you don't have to spend a fortune to get really good sound. We've both heard really expensive stuff that sounds like crap. Yeah, there's nothing more disappointing than going to an audio show or a dealer's showroom and hearing a $50,000 pair of speakers with matching electronics and sources 
And you walk away thinking, yawning. Wow. <sighs> I heard a fifteen thousand dollars speakers uh, uh, a full system at Expona that blew that four hundred thousand dollars system yeah. away. We've all had those experiences. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, there, By the same token, the best sound you're going to find ain't cheap. Usually ain't cheap. Um, Let me ask a question of yeah, you, if you don't mind. Absolutely. In the future for the second space column, yeah. Are there any plans to review newer affordable components that you can slot in? So, for example. Absolutely. If, if there's a twelve hundred dollar pair of mini monitors that, that someone says you got to get these, absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, um, there are some very affordable mono tube amplifiers that are going to be coming through here soon. I think it looks like it. Um, I want to try and keep the price ranges here. I'd like to keep the entire system total in the ten thousand dollar range, plus or minus a few bucks. If you got a five hundred dollar system that makes you tap your toes and sing along, that's all you need. I'm not saying you have to spend more money. What I'm trying to do is help people find ways to spend reasonable amounts of money. Instead, you know, my my main rig downstairs is a bit ridiculous, but the whole point of Second Space is to help people find overachieving products or products that are exceptionally uh, well uh, accomplished at their price point. And that's going to be the goal with Second Space. And I think that's a very, very valuable... Yeah, this is my living room. This is The system is... I mean, there's a rack over there with the turntable and the phono stage, but everything's laid out on the hearth of the fireplace. I need to correct Greg again. It, it is not his living room. It's Stella's living room. She just lets him borrow the space, as I discovered. <laughs> She's being really good, too. So. She is. She yeah, is. So. so I think uh, I think that pretty much covers what we wanted to do here with Second Space. Um, is there anything you want to talk about or add before we... Uh, Head out of this one. Watch for further updates. <laughs> and I'm probably going to join him at some point. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, this is this guy's been batting around doing his own thing at some point. So we'll see if we can get him to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll see. Looks like it could be fun, right? Second space, new apartment lounge. There you go. Drinking Greg Scotch. Hey, hey, hey now. That's the only reason you come up here, isn't it? Life is good. <laughs> we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Maurice. Now, just for some context, to hopefully allow you to experience just how amazing this little system throws down, here is a brief taste of how that space sounds, featuring the song It Could Happen to You from Dimitri Matheny's 2014 release, Sagebrush Rebellion. This is a Blueport Jazz release on Papillon Recordings that was recorded at Dizzy's in San Diego by my dear friend Jim Murad. Jim is Blueport Jazz, the label he founded some four decades ago, and both he and another audio legend and friend, Steve McCormick, did the mastering. This recording has drawn me in because I have spent time with its drummer, Duncan Moore, over many gigs and parties, and I have hung out and know the, the acoustic at Dizzy's on a good number of occasions while visiting with Jim over the years. Enjoy.
As you can see, this system is assembled in a normal living space, my roughly 21 by 13 and a half foot living room, and utilizes the fireplace hearth as well as an equipment stand for the turntable and phono stage. And it isn't just Maurice and I who have been taken with the remarkable performance in this little space. Everyone I've shared a listen to with it has come away with a huge smile on their face and a sense of both surprise and incredulity at what sonic heights it achieves for its relatively affordable investment. For individual product details, pricing, and a detailed floor plan, please take a look at the Second Space page found at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Hover over the Reference System button in the left-hand navigation panel and click on Second Space from the available drop-down menu choices. But the entire system price at original retail pricing would have been under $7,500. Many of these products may be picked up on the pre-owned market today at substantial savings. And I'll bet you simply would not believe how engaging and flat-out fun this system is to be in the presence of. I hope that what has become clear by this point is that like any other endeavor, knowledge and experience are the keys to success. Learning about and understanding what gear brings the strongest, most faithful performance contributions to the system synergy, and the ability to properly integrate that gear into the whole, including your choice of ancillaries, installation preferences, and setup acumen, must be seen as considerably more important to attaining great sound than the raw dollar amount thrown at assembling the system. It will be the goal of the episodes devoted to this space to be able to share the joy and passion music may bring into our lives that may be realized with some of today's much more affordable products, even vintage ones. Further, these observations will be applied in a more realistic circumstance, that of a shared room or space in your family residence. Virtually no one starts with a system that costs more than our homes and exists in a destination dedicated listening space. But as someone with five decades of experience listening to, reviewing, selecting, installing, and setting up audio products of all price ranges, I'm betting that my insights and experiences will be better able to allow you to more clearly and confidently hone in on products in any price range that are overachievers and therefore clearly more deserving of your attention and purchasing decisions. Some of the first such products that will be receiving such treatment here are the absurdly accomplished Audience Claire Audience 1 Plus 1 V5 monitors and the range of equally absurdly affordable WIM streamer DACs. Rest assured there is no cause for alarm. I have no intention of forsaking my primary objective, that of exploring, pursuing, and sharing the exceptional levels of fidelity that can be realized with the finest products available today, set up impeccably in a dedicated listening space. You only need to look back at last week's teaser for the Boris and Acoustic M3s you see behind me today for that reassurance. As always, Thanks for taking the time to drop by today. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers. <laughs>